I think, in all honesty, the thing that engaged me most around the issue of trafficking and enslavement was that I, as an actress, did a lot of work in Eastern Europe. So I saw very early on, this was during Gorbachev days, um, what was happening in restaurants right behind me, guys sitting down discussing setting up false marriage um, businesses and how and saw in particular how it was affecting the women and how it was all women. This wasn't just young pretty girls, it was mothers who were right in the heart of Moscow, in their slippers, in their cardigans, turning, turning to prostitution as a way out. But if you can't take the message of what's going on within grassroots to the government officials, you can't change the law to change it back on the ground. You can't activate that dialogue. Um, and then I found that, that I, I found that it was in so many of the products. I found that agriculture and mining, as I traveled the world, was the largest group. And just like prohibition, it's just gone underground. And it's now bigger than ever. So I kept coming across trafficking as an issue. But I'd learned a bunch of things along the way. Um, and one of them was about working on changing legislation versus pitching all of your energies into raising money. But I was adamant that we would work, do our research, work to how do we change this systemically. The other thing for me was how do I, how do you engage the public on this? Especially if so much of it is uh, legislative. So people say to me, where is it worst in the world? I say, in my living room. It's right in my living room. It's the carpet I'm walking on. It's the sugar in my coffee. It's my coffee in my coffee. It's the sheets I wake up in, the shirt on my back, the car I'm driving, the cell phone I'm using. It's, I would not have my life if I said I want non-enslavement tainted goods. I hope that Asset has built up a history of really wanting to be collaborative with business, but not being soft on business. We're not, we, we get attacked from the NGO side of it because I think that there's a notion that we're soft on business, but we're doing it because there is a piece of this that only business can do. If we can retrace supply chains, and that's a, I know that's a complicated ask, fourth tier suppliers, fifth tier suppliers, but if we can retrace the supply chain that we have lost post-globalization and map it, that is our direct route, if you flip it from a threat to a solution, that is our direct route to the most targeted poverty alleviation you could possibly give, right to the heart of the enslavement and the trafficking. If you're not taught to look for it, you can't see it. The definitions don't add up within the UN. So you have contradictory law. If you have contradictory law, this is why the legislation is, is really vital to work on, you have contradictory strategy. And you have a lot of energy from people who fight the strategies, believing they're working on the right thing because they're working from a different legal perspective. So with sex, Trafficking has become very synonymous with sex trafficking and the forced sex trade. I've started to talk about enslavement versus slavery because I think it puts the emphasis onto the perpetrator and it doesn't label someone or give someone a victim label. But enslavement to me is when somebody completely controls another person using violence or violent threat and exploits them economically, paying them effectively nothing. Now, trafficking is most commonly associated with movement, sometimes movement across, across a border. But ultimately, trafficking is moving someone into a situation of exploitation where they are paid effectively nothing. The International Labour Organization has come out and said that for every one person around the world who's in sex trafficking, nine people around the world are forced to work. The thing I'm becoming more and more concerned with is the security, international security intersect on this, which I think is chilling and terrifying.
Thank you.